The following content was made using purely vocals. No musical instruments were harmed during the making of this video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Indeed, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may peace and blessings be upon his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, brothers. Sisters, ladies, and gentlemen, welcome to In The Mix with DJ Halal, bringing it to you another Thursday, Thursday, alhamdulillah, we're bringing to you another fresh show of In The Mix with DJ Halal, and today, today's show is completely relevant to you and me. Why, why am I saying this? Because you are, pr are probably, you're what well, you're supposed to be, the target audience of an American Muslim youth. And one of the things that we're dealing with is like, man, like every other character that's a Muslim in a movie, what do you notice about them? They're either a, like the 7-Eleven dude, or it's a terrorist, right? Or the taxi driver, right? The, the taxi driver, thank you for that. So... Pretty much what I'm saying is, look, majority of the characters that we see on screen when, when, when Muslims are being depicted are, are like the negative images. The main one, I believe, is the terrorist, is the evil guy, right? And Islamophobia, this, this inherent just dislike and hate for Muslims and Islam is prevalent and it seems to be growing. And that's why I felt that it was important to discuss this issue with, with Brother Hassam Elush, who actually works, mashallah, for care. And today, that's what the show is about. It's about Islamophobia and what American Muslim youth can do to counteract that. What is our role? What should we be doing? Should we just be listening to lectures? I mean, what is it about? So we had an interview with Brother Hassam Elush, and mashallah, it went really well. His, his gone in 60 seconds. I mean... It, I think it's, it probably is one of the funniest ones that we, <laughs> we have. A <laughs> bee has eight pair of wings. <laughs> You're going to check that out shortly, inshallah. But before we get to that, I want to give a shout out to the brothers and sisters who have been supporting us on Twitter, on YouTube, YouTube, on Facebook, everywhere. Shout out to Ahmed Muhyiddin. Shout out to Falling Like Rainex. Call me Squints. Shout out to Squints. And my brother from another mother, Armand Appleby. Jazakum al khair. Thank you guys for your positive feedback. And look, if you want to say, hey, DJ Halal, why haven't you brought on any athletes? Hey, DJ Halal, what's good? Why aren't you bringing on any female scholars? What's good with that? If you want to see it, then let us know, inshallah ta'ala. Give us a message or two. Now, today we're going to be getting into the reminder of the day, which is from a famous philosopher. His name is Sophocles. And he said this, There is no success without hardship. Sophocles is, he's, I mean, it's, it's straightforward that if you want something, if you have a goal, if you want to be successful, then you're going to have to work hard for whatever it is you want. And this this might seem, you know, overly simple, but if you think about this, think about this. Those things in life that are actually worth something, that are actually worthy, that have value, they usually take a lot of hard work to achieve. They usually take a lot of commitment in order to attain that or to maintain something. And those things that aren't really that worthy, they're, 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 it's so common, so easy, it's so easy to come by. And this reminded me of a verse um, in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He says, فَإِنَّمَا عَلَى عُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّمَا عَلَى عُسْرِ يُسْرَى That for indeed with hardship will be ease. And he repeats this, he says, indeed with hardship will be ease. That look, there is no point in your life Right. If, if you're going through a difficult time, listen to this. There's no point in your life where that difficult moment is going to be forever. 
Sometimes we think that, oh my God, dude, like I got to work so hard for this degree or man, I got to raise the kids and this is so, un work is so difficult. That moment that you have, it's just that. It's a moment. It's not eternal. It's not going to last forever. It will eventually fade away. So we got to remember that with the difficulty, there is ease. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to view this at all times in our life. With that said, today our interview is with Brother Hussam Ailoush on Islamophobia and what the American Muslim youth can do to counteract it. Let's get into the interview. Welcome back to In The Mix with DJ Halal. And today we got an amazing show. We got something special. Somebody who is doing work here in the SoCal community for the American Muslims. My brother from another mother. Brother Hussam Ailoush, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you. I love the energy. Inshallah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I mean, you're you're the uh, American Muslim Iron Man. So I got oh. I got to <laughs> match the energy there. I have to live up to that expectation now. <laughs> Inshallah ta'ala. <laughs> All right. So mm -hmm. for, for those at home watching or listening on the podcast, we have a couple of questions for Brother Hussam about Islamophobia. And being American Muslim youth, you know, we're, we're Muslims, we're living here in America. Mm -hmm. We're familiar with Islamophobia. Okay, like mm -hmm. we, we, for example, recently there were those bus ads that were placed, anti-Islam bus advertisements, and then you had uh, someone else came out and put Miss Marvel mm -hmm. stickers on there. So it's around us. But my question is, how do we deal with this as American Muslim youth? What should we be doing? Sure, I think... Whether youth or not, we all have to realize that Islamophobia is not one monolithic problem we have. Uh, there are victims of Islamophobia and there are people who perpetuate Islamophobia. The victims of Islamophobia are two. The, that's the Muslim community itself who are being defamed, uh, who are the target of fear. Basically, people are trying to fear us and fear what we stand for as a religion. But also there's another group of victims and that is the public itself. The public is being manipulated into fearing Muslims. And many people, because they don't know enough about Islam and Muslims, they haven't engaged or interacted with a Muslim neighbor or classmate or co-worker. Uh, for them, it's easier to believe, especially when you uh, connect that with, with the bad news coming from, from some part of the world in unfairly way connected to Islam and Muslims. So it's easy to victimize or uh, mislead the public. So we have to understand that even those who might say something bad, uh, make a comment uh, to you personally or mistreat you, or maybe a, a neighbor who doesn't smile back at you, uh, it is not necessarily because they're educated or informed about, wha about what, what, why they hate you. Mm -hmm. It's mainly because they're misinformed. So for that group of people who are the victims of Islamophobia, although they might themselves be uh, promoting Islamophobia or maybe the victims in, uh, of that fear, we need to educate that public. Th that, that segment of the public, we need to understand that we deal with them <coughs> the prophetic way. And that is with love, forgiveness, and, and inshallah prayer that they will see the truth eventually through our actions and what we need to do. The other uh, uh, side, which is the people who perpetuate Islamophobia, these people need to be exposed for what they are. It's an industry. These are people who are benefiting it, benefiting, benefiting uh, politically or financially from Islam Islamophobia. So we have to expose them. We have to work with others uh, who, who support justice and, uh, and freedom and, and fairness in America to make sure that these people don't become or don't have any legitimate voice in any mainstream uh, uh, circle or at any level. So you're saying, okay, mm -hmm. that's interesting. There's two aspects mm -hmm. when dealing with this. You have on one side, it might be your neighbor, my neighbor, who's gotten this negative image of, oh, that, that dude's a Muslim, I ain't chilling with him. Or, and, and then there's also those people that they might have news shows, they might be on the radio, they might be putting out advertisements on buses and just you know, m just, uh, you know, misrepresenting Islam and really painting this bad picture. So there's two groups that we have, we have to address. Exactly. Two groups. And to put things in perspective, the first group that I talked about, which is the, the people who are the public, the neighbors, the co-workers who are just mistreating you or misunderstanding you or fearing you, uh, uh, are the majority of, of that, of the Islamophobia, you know, uh, category. 
it's a small group, the majority not of the public, <coughs> maybe at, of the public, they're 30, 40 percent of the American public. These are the people who, when we have surveys, say, uh, I have unfavorable views about Islam. I fear Islam and Muslims. I think they're more violent than others, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So they're misinformed or uninformed. The segment, the second segment we talked about are the ones who are fueling Islamophobia deliberately, creating the fear of Islam and the misinformation of Islam. That's a very tiny segment, very tiny segment. We're talking about maybe in the few thousands around the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and these people are well-funded, uh, according to various studies, including a CARE study that was done uh, in 2012. Uh, there are about 37 organizations and institutions around the country, 37 that are f dedicated on a full-time basis to promoting fear of Islam and Muslims. Their budget in about four years, from 2008 to 2012, was $120 million. Whoa. So it's a huge industry with a lot of resources and a lot of resolve to create that fear of Islam and Muslims. My, my follow-up question to that, and we're going to go to break soon, mm -hmm. but is, is this, is let's say we're doing ma that, mashallah, we're, we're, we have that character and people are noticing like, wow, that, that's a really good person right there. Mm -hmm. At some point, should we mention that we're Muslim or at some point do we mention that, mm -hmm. hey, like I, I, I follow Islam? I think it has to be done in a tactful way. You know, you don't parade, you know, my faith. I show it through action. You know, as 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 uh, it, it was when it was asked in some of the earlier narrations, said, "What is iman?" He said, "Al imanu ma waqara fil qalb. What settles in the heart was sadqahu al amal, and the actions prove it. So, it's because no one can see what's in your heart. Right. We can all claim to have the best faith in the world. The reality is that faith is judged by our actions. Now." It is important. Sometimes it, it is easy to tell a Muslim from the beard, the hijab, the, the, the name. You know, if my name is Muhammad, people make that assumption. Sometimes, you know, it, if, it, if it becomes clear you're trying to push your religious identity, I think it's better not to do it. Let people wonder what drives you. Let people judge you by the work itself. Hopefully they will know you're a Muslim in one way or the other. It could be a t-shirt that says, you know, the Muslim community of Corona doing this. It could be when you take a break, when you're doing the service and say, hey, we need five minutes break to do our prayers. Mm. It could be, let it be natural. Let us, let us not push it on people because then two risks that happen. One, we might lose the ajr, the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because sincerity is key. We are doing it to serve people, not to show off, not to get credit from them, but to get credit from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, we might lose those people too because if they think we're not genuine about wha what we're doing, whether it's advancing justice or whether it's s s struggling against injustice or racism, and poverty, then they would benefit from the work we do, but they will not take us seriously. They will think, oh, of course they're doing it. You know, they're trying to get some credit or some pointers mm, here and there. Okay, interesting point. <coughs> Thank you for clearing that up. Sure. With that said, we'll be right back after this quick commercial break. <laughs> Welcome mm. back to In The Mix with DJ Halal joined with Brother Hassan Ailu. And we're talking about dispelling Islamophobia, confronting Islamophobia as American Muslim youth. <coughs> so I know people personally, some of my friends even, uh, we, have, we have Muslim names, mm -hmm. Ali, Ahmed, Muhammad, Aisha, Khadija, whatever, right? I know this brother that, I'm going to change up his name here. I'm, I'm, I ain't going to call him out here, but his name, let's say, was Muhammad, okay? And after 9-11 happened, his parents felt that, you know, like something bad could happen to you. Mm. Um, we're going to legally change your name. So they legally changed his name. And he started telling people his name was Mo or Mike, mm. so to speak. And my question is, in doing these types of things, are we as American Muslim youth losing our identity, our Islamic values by attempting to fit in to a society? Well, let's, let, let us put things in perspective, first of all, and that is uh, the, the social pressure that exists in America on all newcomers in general, all immigrants that came, is huge. This is not something that only Muslims had to deal with. You know, we talk to Asian Americans, you know, you know how many Korean Americans are named you know, who changed their name from a Chinese name to Mike and John and how many Hispanic 
or Spanish speaking people, how many uh, immigrants from Poland, from uh, uh, Hungary, from, I know so many, I've met so many because uh, you want to fit in, you, you need to get a job, you don't want to be, be dealing with people asking what, what was this name? You know, when, when you get a marketer, marketing person calling you or telemarketer, what's your name? It is normal. People want to have an, uh, an easier, you know, people follow the path of least resistance. And one of the ways to achieve that is to avoid what is different, what makes you stand out, whether it's your religious belief or your ethnic look or your food or your name, whatever it is. Right. Now, you add a whole different layer of pressure that Muslims have to go through. And that is the fact that Muslims are demonized, not just as the other, you know, which is normal for any new coming uh, community, <coughs> but also demonized as an evil, uh, uh, dangerous, uh, to be feared community, quote unquote, through Islamophobia. And then you add a third layer, and that is, it is hard enough to be a youth in America, because there are so many expectations on you from all sides, forget about the Muslim community. And then you add the Muslim community expectation. So with that, I don't envy anyone growing up as a youth in America. And I, and I really commend anyone who survives that process, keeping some sense of identity. So for, first of all, we don't want to judge people because obviously everyone is in a different situation in life that allows them more flexibility to, to uh, you know, be proud of their identity in one way or the other. <coughs> what we need to do is recognize that that weakness exists on everybody. Uh, and, and what we can do as an organization, we can push the envelope of comfort. So protect the rights of people to practice their religion, normalize being a Muslim. That's something we can do. But also those who are stronger in, the, in their identity because of the support they get from their families, uh, from their background, from uh, the community where they live in. If you live in Irvine, if you live in a garden grove, as opposed to living in some small town in northern part of Texas, it's going to be a huge difference mm -hmm. of how much you're accepted. Those of us who have it easier to live your life and, and protect your identity, should help push the envelope by promoting the normalization of being Muslim, running for Congress, being a mayor, being a, a DJ, uh, having your show, uh, being uh, vis visible in one way or the other, uh, being uh, on TV, uh, on radio. So doing that and normalizing it, we were pushing the envelope and making it more comfortable for others to uh, live as a Muslim with the understanding that it is gonna, it's, it's going to continue to happen where there will be Muslims and others who don't feel comfortable enough to be identified as different, although difference is something to celebrate. And it's part of our struggle as a mostly immigrant community, that is the Muslim community, immigrant or their descendants, to work with others who are also different in America from the majority, whether it's an ethnic minority, uh, whether it's your African American, Latino American, Korean American, Japanese American, or religious minority, the Jewish American, the Buddhist American, the Sikh American, the Hindu American, and others, to work with them to normalize being different and actually not only normalize, celebrate that mm. difference. So people can feel proud of their identity and no one has to hide their own or uh, uh, adopt somebody else's identity to fit in right then <coughs> it's interesting that you you made this point that alhamdulillah we have we have it really good here in socal mashallah mm -hmm. like we're blessed mm -hmm. but with that blessing <coughs> we have more of a responsibility to, exactly. to push the the envelope so to speak and the second thing that came to my mind is we've we've discussed this before I, I've, I've talked to, to you about this before is that some people think that um, that American culture is just it's just one distinct mm -hmm. way, but in actuality, it's just this it's this uh, variety of, of 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 many cultures brought together. Exactly. Right. Absolutely. I mean, I know we randomly keep hearing every once in a while the melting pot. You know, mel you know, be an American. You're not an American. You know, what is an American? You know, I like American food. What is an American food? Pizza? No, it is not. Hamburgers, it is not. Hot dogs, none of that. You know, ham hamburgers, Hamburg, you know, the city of Hamburg. Hot dogs, which are called the Frankfurters usually, which is Frankfurt. Uh, pizza from Italy. America is the mixture, the beautiful mixture of the whole world coming together. It's not really a melting pot. It's more like a mixture of a salad. Mm. Everyone keeps their beautiful identity. And what eventually the, the putting together of all these subcultures and sub-identities sub Come bring up together what's an American culture, the mixture of all of it, where everyone feels comfortable enough to be who they are. And I think some of the immigrants don't, don't realize that sometimes. 
or some who are not empowered to be proud of their identity. And that happens sometimes. People want to fit in because, again, they want to be accepted. So it's up to us to highlight that strength in America. There's no other place in the world today <clears throat> where all the cultures can come together and be respected. I'm not saying we don't face challenges. You know, racism exists, and you can talk to any minority in this mm -hmm. country. But the reality is, overall, because of the history of America, because of the laws of America, mm -hmm. and because of the activism of people involved in America, we can actually establish a place where cultures are respected, religious backgrounds are respected, and, and, and celebrated ra rather than just tolerated, like it happens in Europe, sometimes even intolerated. But here, we can actually have it celebrated. We can make biryani a very popular food in America, the way tacos are. We can make shawarma a top food in America, so people realize what the Middle Easterners, what the South Asians bring to the table. We can celebrate the culture of the language. We can celebrate the music. We can celebrate the art, the literature. All of that could be added and will become, I have no doubt, it will become part of what makes America, America. MashaAllah. Speaking of that, I heard you had Nihari recently. How, oh, yes. <laughs> how was that? How did you like oh, it? Oh, it's good. <laughs> so good. You should go there. Visit uh, Imam Faiz in uh, Rupa Valley uh, Mosque. Was, it, was, was the Nihari mm. like more spicy than you anticipated? I wish it was. No, actually, he toned down because not everybody are there. But, you know, they always have the, the pepper, the chili peppers on the yeah, side. You so you can add with the ginger there you as go. much as you want. Yeah, I actually, unusually, I'm one of the those Arabs who actually enjoy a spicy uh, wow. Indian Pakistani food. Subhanallah, yeah. that's mm. a rarity. But, mashallah. Mm. Last question before we get into Gone in 60 Seconds. Actually, we're going to get into Gone in 60 Seconds mm. after this quick commercial break. Welcome back to In the Mix mm -hmm. with DJ Halal. Drop the sound by DJ. DJ, 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 DJ okay. So, DJ, DJ, we're talking Halal. with Brother Hassan Elush here. And my last question is, what examples or instances from the life of Rasulullah can we take mm -hmm. when discussing this issue of Islamophobia and, ad and addressing it? Well, his whole life... Uh, it's filled with examples from, from the day one, from the minute he announced that he received the revelation uh, until the last day before he died, uh, full of examples. And I, I mentioned that because, you know, some, someone might say, well, you know, at the beginning he was weak, uh, he was targeted, he didn't have support, so he had to be nice, he had to act in a certain way. But the reality is, from the beginning, he was rejected, <coughs> he was defamed, Islamophobia existed from the time of the first prophets, nothing new, meaning f promoting fear and misinformation about him. So he was called crazy, he was called a poet, he was trying to, he was called, he is seeking power. And of course he responded very simply. Uh, you know, the verses in the Quran are many where it says, for example, وَأَعْرَضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِرِينَ And look away and move away, <coughs> walk out and walk away from those who are ignorant or those who promote ignorance, Islamophobes basically. So the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the Prophet not to engage with those who are intentionally, deliberately promoting ignorance. Allah asked him to engage with the public, even those who are misinformed about Islam, and do so with patience. <coughs> to, do the, to, to do this with the real, realization, it's not about winning an argument. We're here to win the hearts and souls of people. We're here to win the hearts and their minds and, and their love and their compassion and their brotherhood and sisterhood. This is really what keeps us going, meaning you will be defamed. You will be called names. You have to have sabr, patience, to remember you're doing it for a bigger cause. Examples of many, you know, even <coughs> when he was trying to make da'wah in Ta'if, the city of Ta'if near Mecca, outside of, you know, Mecca actually in Arabia. And the people of Ta'if greeted him with calling him names, throwing rocks at him, stones, kicking him out until he was bleeding. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the angel, Jibreel, to him. Telling him, I have orders from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take your orders. If you want me, I can close down the two mountains around Ta'if on the people of Ta'if for what they've done to you. Allah is upset by the way they treated you. Uh -huh. And his answer was, no, this is not what we came for. <coughs> may Allah may Allah send among them those who would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he had mercy for them. When he entered <coughs> many years, uh, on the eighth year uh, coming back uh, after Hijrah, when he went back uh, to, to Mecca, mm -hmm. uh, his city, the same city that 
mistreated him, or the leaders of that city mistreated him, rejected him, killed his followers, tortured his followers, abused him. Uh, when he went back with a whole huge army as a, as, as a winner, the city had submitted. He had the chance to punish each one of those responsible for the torture and the abuse and the killing. But what did he do? He said, اذهبوا فأنتم الطلقاء Go your way, you are free to go free, basically. Without punishment, forgiven. You're all forgiven, basically. Because he was not there to establish something about his ego, to undo you know, justice that was done at him and for him or against him. He was there to deliver a message. So for us, we have to remember from the example, the stories of the Prophet ﷺ, that we are here to help people, inshallah, find out what the truth is. If they don't become Muslim, because that's something between them and Allah SWT, at least to value and respect Islam and Muslims. This is the, all we can do. The rest is in the hands of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. MashaAllah. Mm. Beautiful examples from, I mean, anytime you talk about mm. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there's just always that sweetness there. There's always that barakah, the blessing that come with it. Alhamdulillah for that. Mm. Um, any last mm. words of encouragement, words of advice for the uh, youth listening and watching? I want to commend the youth, actually. I'm, I want to thank them because they are the ones making the difference for our community. They are, the youth are no longer the future leaders of our, the, our community. Truly, the, the, the youth have become the leaders of the community. At the mosques, look at the imams who are making the huge difference now. Look at the organizations. Who is heading the offices? Who, who are the lawyers defending our rights? Who are the ones building relationships? Who are the ones organizing events that protect the rights of all people in America? It's the American Muslim youth, and I'm so proud to see them around, and I'm, I'm so hopeful that we've barely started scratching the surface. I think the future is going to be so bright, we cannot keep up with it. But this is from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep doing what you're doing. We're behind you, we're with you, and we're so hopeful that inshallah you'll make a difference, not only for our community, but for everyone in America, and inshallah even in the globe. Inshallah ta'ala, beautiful message right there. But now, it's time for Gone in 60 Seconds. Oops. <laughs> so just to give you a little recap of the rules here, I'm going to ask Brother Hassam as many questions as I can within 60 seconds. You answer them uh, to the best of your ability. If you don't know it, you can pass. say pass. Okay. okay. But um, if, you get, if you get majority of them correct, then we will donate to charity on your behalf. Inshallah. I love that. Okay. okay, so there it is. Donate to charity on his behalf, inshallah ta'ala. So when we got the timer, ready, set, go. What is the name for a one-wheeled cycle? Monocycle. How many colors are in the rainbow? S five. What is the largest organ in the human body? Lung. Who is on the $50 bill? Pass. Which actor currently plays Iron Man? Not Hussam Eilush. Bees have how many pairs of wings? Eight. Which famous author <laughs> wrote A Tale of Two Cities? Uh, pass. <laughs> Name one Bollywood film. Oh, I know an actor, Shah Rukh Khan. Mashallah. <laughs> how many gigabytes are in a terabyte? A thousand. What color is yak's milk? <laughs> Pass. What's the difference between libel and slander? Uh. That's it. Time's up. Time's up. <laughs> did, I, did I get at least one right? I think you got. <laughs> bees have eight pair, eight pairs of wings. Um, I, I run away from bees. <laughs> Four or eight. They, I think they ha they have two pairs of wings, so meaning they have four, four wings. Four wings. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Right. Yeah. So, mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I, yeah, mashallah. With that said, uh, great interview. Jazakallah khair for that. It's back a pleasure, to uh, Back to everybody. Back to, back to everyone. Back to DJ Halal in the studio. There we have it, mashallah. Our interview with Brother Hussam Ailoush. Gone in 60 seconds. I've never, it's, it's cool to see these speakers, these leaders of the community in that setting. Mashallah, shout out to Brother Hussain Malouch for that. One of the reflections I had was, look man, a lot of times we think that as American Muslims, for example, that in order for me to make da'wah, 
to give da'wah, to give the message of Islam, that I got to be in people's faces and hand a pamphlet and say, Allah says this in the Quran. But in reality, are people really going to be receptive to that? And what is it that, that, that people are open to, that human beings universally like? What are they attracted to? They're attracted to good character. They're attracted to love that emanates from the heart and then it, it goes into your actions. Being kind, being considerate to people. Those are the things that appeal to individuals. That's what sticks out. That's what they'll, they'll notice when they, see, when they see you. So his, his point in, in mentioning that was interesting, but also that at some point you do have to you know, uh, uh, make it known that, hey, I, I am a Muslim. And I do, uh, I do, uh, you know, worship Allah, and I follow Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But at the same time, we 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 need to realize that we can't be all up in dude's face saying this, right? We gotta, mashallah, be of good character and be proud of who we are. So, alhamdulillah for that. Jazakallah khair to brother Hassan Malush for the interview and a reminder to everyone that we do have. A podcast version of this. So if you're watching this on uh, YouTube, you can listen to it on iTunes, right? So you can go on you, you can go on iTunes and subscribe to the podcast. We've been hitting them up there on, on on iTunes as well. There's also a DJ Halal Instagram account, okay? So you can add us on Instagram, and of course, you're probably watching this on YouTube. I might forget something. Oh, like, oh yeah, the Facebook. We got the Facebook as well. So a shout out to Allah. What's going on? And the Twitter, right? Twitter. We've been getting a lot of feedback on Twitter. So, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Send us your tweets, your comments, your suggestions, whatever you want. Anything else that you would like to say or that you would like to say, inshallah, Donna. We good? We good? All right. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Subscribe at the bottom. And with that said, I'd like to give a shout out to my man, brother Niall Hafiz, wherever he is. Mashallah, holding it down, our production. Analyst and D -D 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 this is your brother in Islam, DJ H A L A L, telling you to always, always keep it halal. <laughs>